Hey beautiful. So I want to talk about dreams. We're gonna talk about dreams, dreaming, the dream state, dreamscape, dream interpretation, dream infiltration, the dream layers, the dream realities. Are we the dreamers in the dream? Is reality actually the dream? And when we go to sleep, where do we go? Lots I want to talk about in this live stream. If you have a dream that you would like me to interpret, comment below or let me know. Let's talk about dreams. Um, dreams, nightmares, are we processing? Is it a creation? Uh, what is actually the dream state? It is very connected to your clairvoyance. It's very connected to your third eye. Let's talk about this. Um, so if you've got any questions, pop them in. Um, my 21 Day Shifter program, I did say that I was going to um, close it at the end of the week. I've changed my mind about that. So I'm closing the doors to the 21 Day Shifter program tomorrow. So send me a message or the link is in the title of my live stream if you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me in my 21 Day Shifter program. Sorry, I've changed my mind because that's happening, closing tomorrow. Thank you. I like my hair too. <laughs> it's funny, right? I just like popped it up when it was wet and then I'm like, oh, I think it'll be nice to stay on this morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So welcome to my live stream. If you haven't been here before, let me know. My name is Hannah from Reality Awareness and I'm your intuitive healer, life purpose mentor. I help people awaken and trust their intuition and create the reality that you really want to live in, clearing out all the subconscious stuff. I train intuitive healers. I train people to become intuitive healers and moving from empath state, being affected by everyone's energy, being held down, locked down by trauma, and actually stepping into your power and using your powers, your empath powers, for what you really want to create in the world. Yeah? So, hi, Damon. Hi, Kirsty. Hello. Okay, let me share this and then I'll answer your questions. Okay, what does walking in winter mean? Do you mean? Yeah, let me let me answer these questions. I'm just gonna share this live stream though, and then I will be present with them. So if you've got questions about dreams or dream interpretation, you want me to interpret your dreams or a nightmare, let me know. I freaking love doing this stuff. So let's dive into it. Just gonna share this in one more place and then we shall dive into it. Perfect, okay. Now just bring up your comments. Sweet, okay, yay. All right, I'm feeling pretty good today. Very focused, on track. I took a day fully to myself yesterday and was fucking amazing. So yeah, I'm good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Curious how you guys are. Okay. So walking in winter, is that what you said, Carrie? So Gayanne says, I used to dream a lot about my old house, nightmares mostly, running away from ghosts and the house being on fire. Interesting. Um, Ricky says, dreamt I used, to, I tried to smudge something last night, but the smudge stick wouldn't work as as it was wet, interesting, sticky. Uh, Gaming says dream a lot about house, the houses, the houses, old basements. Okay. All right. So Carrie, when you say what does walking in winter mean? Do you mean like in your dream you're walking in winter? Like, can you give me a bit more information? So like, are you walking in uh, snow? Is it raining? Um, is it cold? Like, is it not snowing but it's cold? Um, do you know where you are? Like, is it a place that you're familiar with or is it just somewhere completely out of the blue? Um, if that's what you mean, can you just give me a bit more information about that? 
Um, so Ricky, sorry, Gayanne, when you said, I used to dream a lot about my old house, nightmares mostly and running away from ghosts and the house being on fire at times. And um, when you said dream, dream a lot about the house's old basement. So do you mean like your old house, like in the basement? Is that what you mean? So is it somewhere you used to live? Like, is it a childhood home? Can you just um, give me a bit more information there? Um, so Ricky, when you said dreamt, I tried to smudge something last night, but the smudge stick wouldn't work as it was wet, sticky. So the question I want to ask you, Ricky, when you tried to smudge something, like, are you aware of what you were trying to smudge in the dream? Like, was it something that you're connected to in your waking life that you're like, I need to get this away? Um, or were you trying to smudge something that you weren't sure what it was? But this, it was more focused on that, you know, it was wet, wouldn't, wouldn't burn. Yeah, if you can just let me know. Kirsty says, I keep dreaming I'm in a different body and country living through disasters. With each one I wake up from, I start another. I'm not me, I'm someone else. What could this mean? Okay, that's really big. Um, I keep dreaming I'm in a different body and country living through disasters with each one I wake up from I start another I'm not me I'm somewhere else what could this mean okay so when you say I'm living through disasters do you mean like you're living through natural disasters and like when you're living through disasters like are you fixing or helping something or are you just um Or like, are you literally like in chaos and trauma from, from the disaster? Does that make sense? So Peter says, I have nightmares yesterday and this comes back again. Yeah. Okay. So, so nightmares coming back. So nightmares are your subconscious processing like unresolved trauma depending on the style and nature of the nightmare they can be an infiltration but it really depends it's very um okay so when i talk about dream infiltration like this i want to say there's two types of dreams there's actually a lot of dreams okay but let's just talk about two types of dreams for this minute so a nightmare and an infiltration are two very different feelings okay I want to tap into the feelings of the dream okay so move this down a bit it feels like I'm looking too high up or something okay so when we talk about um, a, like an infiltration so there's an infiltration and there's a nightmare a nightmare is your like there's, you could say an infiltration is a nightmare too, okay? But an infiltration, sorry, a nightmare is your subconscious trying to process something in your life, in your waking life that you haven't dealt with, right? And usually there's a lot of fear or trauma there. Now, the reason that can be so like scary like a nightmare is because you're scared to go there and process it in your waking life. So you're pushing it under the carpet, you're turning a blind eye to it, to it you don't want to look at it. Um, you know, whereas like you're, um, you know, like, and, and the nightmare is like, it's trying to get your attention. This is the, the very same as like when clients come to me and they're having scary third eye visions, like they keep seeing someone dying or they keep seeing car accidents or something that's really frightening. Okay. And they're like, oh my God, like, I don't want to do my intuition. I don't want to do this stuff because it's look at look what I'm being shown it's scary like why is there a ghost turning up why am I seeing this stuff right I don't want to I don't want to do this intuition stuff and the thing is is that when they start working with me and they actually start building their intuition and really understanding it and building their psychic muscles and understanding this sort of realm like those visions don't happen anymore why? Because it was their intuition going, hello, you need to build your spiritual awakening. Like you need to deal with this spiritual stuff. Like we're trying to get your attention. And so they still have visions, 
but it won't be so like scary in your face, right? Because what's actually happening there is um, it, like your intuition is trying to get your attention. Like if it was just like a beautiful angel, you'd be like, oh, that's nice. And you keep doing your day. <laughs> but you're like seeing someone die or the car accident, for example, it's like, constantly in your mind and it's like trying to get your attention so you go to like a psychic and you're like why is this happening <laughs> it's like because your intuition wants to to you it's time for you in your evolution of consciousness and your personal development etc for you to start actually working on building your psychic abilities right whether you do it for a career is not a, or not is irrelevant to the fact that it's time for you to start doing that so as I said, like those scary visions are your intuition trying to get your attention. If it was just a beautiful angel, you'd be like, that's nice. And you'd keep going in your normal day, right? In your normal life. So, so when you have a nightmare, it's a similar thing, right? Especially when it's about something that you know you're pushing under the carpet and need to deal with, but usually we don't know how to deal with it. And that's why we push it under the carpet, so to speak. Now, an infiltration dream is a little bit different. It definitely has a different feeling, okay? An infiltration dream, that's just the word I'm using for it. Maybe there's a specific word, I don't know. But an infiltration dream has a very different feeling. Like, you will wake up from the dream and you'll be like, that was not a dream. You literally feel like you have been somewhere. You literally feel like you have experienced something like it's a very different feeling like you will literally wake up and you'll be like that was not a dream and you're sort of almost in shock for a while because you're processing it because you're like that was not a dream <laughs> i don't know how to say it any other way than that but the feelings are very different okay now the biggest thing about um uh, dream interpretation is that as soon as you wake up those moments in, you know, just as you're coming into full consciousness are the best times to process your dream. And you've probably done it before. Like you'll be, you'll be laying there and you'll be like, oh, you're trying to like remember the dream and you're like, I don't want to wake up yet. <laughs> right. Because you're like, you know, you're, you're fully in, you're still in it. Right. So, um, you know, those, those first moments when you wake up are the most pertinent times to interpret your dreams, to understand it, to, you know, even if you don't understand and, and to remember it. Yeah. Um, okay. So Peter, like I said, so nightmare. So why has it come back again? Because you need to deal with it. So, you know, and if you're like, well, I don't know what the dream was trying to tell me. Well, if you want to talk about specifics, you can share them on the live stream or you can book in for a consult with me. Um, I love doing this stuff, but it's deep in the, in the subconscious, in the, you know, of really diving into what's, you know, going on underneath there, right? Um, so they will keep coming back and reoccurring dreams keep coming back because you're not dealing with the, the waking life stuff, yeah? A dream infiltration is a whole nother level and each, what, what happens in each dream infiltration, so to speak, um, is obviously very variable. Now, when we look at how many stars are in the sky and in the cosmos and beyond is how many different scenarios and what the dream infiltrations can mean. Um, so they are very sort of, I want to say personalized in the sense that I couldn't give you like a generalized, like this is what it's about <laughs> because it'd be so different for you and your unique life purpose, but it does have something to do with your purpose. So there's a generalized answer for that. <laughs> um, so Kirsty, coming back to when you're saying like, I, I keep dreaming I'm in a different body and in a, ki in a different country living through disasters. Um, with each one I wake up from and I start another. So then I asked you, so I asked him, oh yeah, so Kirsty said yes, bombings, wars, etc. Um, so Kirsty said, that's how I felt about my dreams in the other body ones. Yeah. And so this is, um, I guess, a good example of a, like an infiltration dream. And there's sort of two different things. There's ones where... Like if we talk about an infiltration dream, and when I say infiltration, I don't know if that's the right word to describe it. Like, you know, it's really like, are we in this current reality today as you're looking at me talking at this live stream on your device, like your waking state, we're gonna call it as waking reality. How do we know that this isn't a dream? Like, how do we know that this isn't a dream? Like when we really think about it, how do we, how do we know that? Right. If we look at Avatar, 
right as an example and you know how like they go to sleep in those things and then they wake up in their bodies and you know like how do, which one's real and which is interdiment like okay all right let's just okay let's see connected to this reality right now okay you can feel your skin your face you might just want to you know just yourself a glass of water or something just for a minute okay come back to this reality <laughs> yeah when we talk about an infiltration dream, there's ones where I feel like we are going and doing work and then there's ones where we are getting worked on and then there's ones where we're experiencing different realities and there's ones where we are different people in realities and I'm calling them realities, dreams, dreamscape, dream state, like, and then there's ones where we are, um, where people are coming to us uh, to, you know, like, <laughs> try and find our DNA, try and find out who we are. Like there's there's different ones. And I want to say like in this waking reality today, just like if you had a stranger or a murderer or, or uh, you know, someone trying to just walk straight through your house, like every boundary, every like, you know, thing and rule that you do in today's, you know, reality, for example, like is it applies in the dream state too. So I don't want you to get scared when I'm talking about infiltration and all that sort of thing. I want you to be confident that if like there was a, a murder at the front door, let's like hope not, but you know, something bad at the front door, for example, like you would ring the police. Okay. Like help me in, in a dream state, it applies the same. Okay. So your strength, confidence, and who you are in the waking state is the same in the dream state. Okay, you have the same confidence, abilities, protection, blah, blah, blah. Okay, every reality in that regard is the same in what you can do. Yeah, you may even have other powers that are not conscious in this reality and another reality too, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to come back to your comment in a moment, Kirsty, because there's other comments that have come up and I don't want to lose them all. And I know I asked you, Gayanne, as well. So yes, it's your childhood home. Um, so when we're talking about the old house, so Gayan said he used to dream a lot about my old house nightmares, mostly running away from ghosts and the house being on fire. And then you're talking about the basement. So, you know, like that for me is, you know, cause when we just talked about the nightmares and the infiltration and stuff, you know, it's like you're processing things that happened from your childhood in your dream state via nightmares, especially when we're dreaming about our old house. Now there's lots of different scenarios here, but one of the things I've found with dreaming of your old house as a child, like your childhood home, dreaming of things that happened, or you might dream about like, oh, it's your home, but those things in your dream actually didn't happen. And again, it's your subconscious trying to process the trauma of what's happened. And I said, like, usually those dreams come to you when you've just shifted in this current waking reality. You've just shifted in a level of consciousness or personal development or you're just working on something or, you know. And so, for example, say you're trying to move into a new career, for example, right? Um, and you're doing all the things and something's not right or whatever. Then you have this nightmare about your childhood stuff, right? Or the childhood home, but it doesn't make sense because that didn't happen in the home. But you just like wake up and you're like... <laughs> What was that? Um, but it was your childhood home, right? And the basement or it's on fire or whatever. And so, you know, what's happening is like you're doing your career and your waking life and you're trying to move into this new area or something. And then you have a nightmare about your childhood thing. Like that's you sort of, I want to say, especially if it was like on fire or something. Again, that, there's so many scenarios with that. But say if it was on fire, the house was on fire in your dream, that's you burning the block for moving into your career. So it's like you might be burning like the structure of what's held you stuck, right? Structure of your house represents the structure of your makeup in your current reality because you grew up in it and you're moving into a whole different career that maybe the family doesn't approve of, for example. And so you're burning that belief system to the ground so you can move forward, so you're processing it in your dream state, for example, okay? So, you know, and when you're running away from ghosts, it could be like that you're not, um, you know, like there might be skeletons in the closet, for example, that you need to like, um, you know, deal with. Um, even running away from ghosts can also mean, oh, like the sense that I'm getting is like, say if something bad happened to you as a child with a family member or something, like it's like the ghost haunting you is like, you know, that, that trauma needs to be dealt with because it's, 
it's haunting you subconsciously like it, it's it, it's a subconscious block to move forward do you know what i mean if you want to look at it like that so again lots of different scenarios but that you know is sort of some ideas to help you there um so carrie when you said like walking in i you said what does it mean walking in winter and then i asked you is it snowing is it not um you said yes if i'm walking while it's snowing and then you said walking through snow that is over two feet tall not too cold but i remember being tired and crying so this one's awesome um again like I'm just intuitively sort of giving you ideas about what it could be with what you guys are giving me because every, per every person is different. But on a general sort of thing, when we look at a water in dreams, is always relational to your emotions. Um, if it's clear, beautiful flowing water, you're in a good state, like you're clear, healthy, emotionally, etc. If it's like stagnant, like muddy, can't see the bottom, it's dirty water, like you've got some emotions to purge out, right? Um so, you know, so when you're talking about snowing, it's two feet tall, I'm not too cold, um, but I remember being tired and crying. So first of all, like my mind goes to, well, you know, like, especially if you're crying and tired in the snow in the winter, um, like that's how you're feeling in waking life, but you might be suppressing that, might be like under the surface. So there's really like frozen emotions that need to start defrosting and coming out. Like they're probably like I'm sort of sensing, you know, and you could look at it as like two feet tall. There's a lot of like suppression of emotions. They're actually frozen. So when it's like frozen trauma and defrosting the trauma that's, you know, buried, <laughs> deep down buried, um, it, it's like it's starting to defrost frost and especially if in the dream you're crying and you're tired because it's hard and it's heavy and it's very tiring to push down dreams um sorry to push down dreams to push down trauma and bury that subconsciously and so it's interesting in your dream you're tired and um uh what is it tired and crying right and it's like so in your dream you're crying and you're tired of like carrying the weight of frozen feelings, right? So there's feelings. So like if it was like, say, say if you told me, Carrie, that it's like stagnant, um, muddy water and I'm walking through a pond that's all rank and slosh, I'm like, well, there's the motions that need to be moved out, but they're actually frozen. So it's like the frozen stage is like, I want to say the hardest stage, not the hardest stage. Like, you know, especially when you're dreaming of crying, so it's starting to defrost. Yeah, those emotions are starting to defrost. So you're, you're on a path where you're starting to heal these buried traumas, these buried um, situations that you just haven't dealt with. And you know, some people are like, oh, you're bad because you haven't dealt with your shit. And it's like sometimes a coping mechanism is actually pushing shit aside and surviving. And what I mean by surviving is maybe you went through a, a divorce, maybe there was a few funeral um like a death in the family and you had to organize everything and then you had to hold it all together because everyone else was falling apart and no one else was freaking able to capable of sorting shit out like you know what i mean so you know when people say oh you haven't dealt with your shit like i just i get so fuming about that because i'm just like man like as a human if you're a single mom or a parent or you know i don't know someone else who you know everyone's falling apart and you're the only one that has to hold it together like pushing it down <laughs> is a coping mechanism. It's also called shock, right? And when we actually start defrosting shock, there's the grief, and so the tears are coming out. So there's lots of different scenarios, right? But there's one for you there um, with the snow, especially when it's like two, is over two feet tall. So it's interesting, the things in our dreams that we remember. Yeah, those little snippets that we remember is like little, little keys that unlock the door of what's actually there. Does that make sense? So yeah, hopefully um, that helps. So Carrie, so yeah, that was for you, Carrie. So Ricky, no, I can't remember, just wouldn't smoke as it was wet and sticky. Okay, awesome. So I asked you about like you were smudging something and you couldn't actually light it because it was wet and sticky. And I asked you, did you know what you were smudging or was it just the smudge stick that you it was wet and sticky? And so, you know, wet and sticky, you know, in trauma terms, um, in energetic trauma terms. And when I look at, um, so in Trust Intuition, we go into all the different types of traumas that are energetically imprinted onto a person or physically even. Um, you're very welcome, Carrie. Um, so, you know, like, yeah, so in Trust Intuition, in the training school, we go, well, in the, in the course, we go through 
certification course, we go through like, is it, is it sticky? Is it, you know, wet? Like there's all different meanings of trauma. Um, if it's dry, hot, cold, sticky, wet, like there's all different meanings of different traumas in a body energetically and physically, depending on what it is. So you using that language is very distinct in the sort of trauma that's going on. And if we look at like with Carrie's example with ice and the frozen, um, you know, and just what I gave that example, it's like the frozen, then I was like, but if it's a muddy stagnant pond, that's a different story. If it's flowing water and it's muddy or dirty and you can't see the bottom, that's different again. If it's clear and running. So you can see how there's different sort of layers of the symbolism that our intuition is giving us in our dream state or in a waking state, right? Um, of, you know, what's actually happening here. So, um, so for example, Ricky, when you said, you know, I was trying to light a smudge stick or I was trying to smudge something, but it was wet and sticky. You didn't actually say, well, it wouldn't light. I mean, maybe you were trying to light it in the dream, but you were just, you just gave me the information that it was, um, just wet and sticky. And I'm like, well, did you have a lighter? Was it burning? Like, were you trying to, or was it just you were conscious that the smudge stick was wet and sticky, right? And all these little things give all these answers where you don't, you weren't sure what you were trying to burn away. You were just actually, um, clear that, um, it was just wet and sticky. Did you have a lighter? Were you trying to like, do you know what I mean? This is like all these different keys, right? Anyway, the point is when you're saying like, it wouldn't smoke as it was just wet and sticky. And what I want to say there is that there is something in your life that is, I want to say wet and sticky. It's like icky, like, ugh, and, and a little bit like the nightmare of like sweeping under the carpet stuff. What is icky that you just like, ugh, and I feel like you're conscious of it, right? You're, it's wet emotions. So you're conscious of these feelings is my sense, but it's sticky, icky, ugh, just put it over there. So I'm not dealing with it. I know it's there. And like I said, it's not bad. It's just sometimes we don't know how to fucking, we don't know what to do with that. <laughs> can be so big that we don't know what to do with it. And this is what I do work with my clients, which by the way, 21 day shifter program, I'm closing tomorrow night, tomorrow evening. So in about 24 hours, roughly. Um, so this is working with me one-on-one. -on -one. So if you were, this is the stuff that I work with with my clients. We really sort of like figure out the how, okay. <laughs> and we unpick all these pieces. Yeah. So the wet sticky, yeah, I feel like there's something there that you're just not sure what to do with, but it's quite icky. Now this might be something that you're like, yep, I know what that is, Hannah, not dealing with it. Or you might be like, well, actually, um, I don't know what that is. If you don't know what that is specifically, I feel like this is a trauma, sludge, <laughs> sludge trauma, it feels very sludgy that's starting to surface. And you might just be feeling uncomfortable. You might be feeling icky, like if you feel dirty, like, you know, when those times we feel dirty and we just like, even if we have a shower or we smudge, <laughs> we just still feel dirty. Like, you know, that's a trauma surfacing. Yeah, that's a trauma surfacing from deep within. So yeah, so some, some examples there for you. Um, okay. So Kirsty said, oh yeah, so the bombings was, etc. And so this, you know, depending, like I feel like so there's two scenarios here. Either you're going through, um, you know, like you're sort of helping those situations, you know, shift with your vibration and or you're experiencing them because there's something in your life, current waking life that is like a bomb. You're welcome, Ricky that is like a bomb going off. You're just like, ah, but you don't know what to do with it. So you're just sort of in it and there's like bombs going off, but you don't know what to do with it. Especially if you're waking up and going to another one and another one and another one, but you're in a different body. So it's like these different parts of you that are just getting bombed on, bombed on, but you're just like, ah, don't know what to do. It's almost like every area of your life is like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. So you're just experiencing it different scenarios that depends on your situation of course so when i work with people one-on-one -on -one, obviously we can go deeper into like specifics for you and then we get to the core and unlock it um but hopefully these ideas on this live stream are also helping you guys who are listening okay so bianca says uh, i'm not sure if bianca's still here and there's a few comments that have come through um, having dreams that I've lost something, but not sure what I've actually lost. I wake up, 
sleepwalking, looking in drawers and under things. Yeah, so um, lots of different scenarios there, of course, always going to be for dreams, but just giving what's coming through when I read these. Um, so, Bianca, so the lost something, not sure what I've actually lost, but I wake up sleepwalking, looking in drawers and under things. So I would be looking at, you know, how old are you? Where are you in your time of life right now? Oh, you're still here. Awesome. Um, you know, and you know, I want to say, do you feel lost in your current, like waking life normally, apart from when you're sleepwalking? Um, you know, is there like something that you just feel like, cool, life's good, but is this all I'm doing? You know, I'm just curious how you're feeling in your waking life. Um, is Bob still here? Bob Wee. I'm not sure if that's how to pronounce her last name. So just curious if Bob is still here. There's a few comments coming through. Leanne says, last night I had a dream. I walked away from someone and went to find them. I walked away from someone and went to find them. Okay, Bob's still here. Leanne, when you say like, I walked away from someone, but then I went to find them, like, can you just give me a bit more information about that? Like, so you walked away from them, what, but then like you walked away from them and find, like to find them, or you walked away from them, then you're like, oh no, I need to find them. Just curious about that. Okay, so Bob says, my best friend killed himself 13 years ago. Five years ago, I had a massive heart attack and was very close to death, basically in between. He was standing in the room that night, eight years after he passed. Lately, he's been coming into my dreams talking about just random things. Okay, so he's your best friend. How long were you best friends before he killed himself? And how did you feel when like he was standing in the room when you had the heart attack? Like, did you feel like he caused it? Did you feel like he was just there for support? Like, were you concerned that he was there or did it feel comforting that he was there? Um, when you say lately, he has been coming into my dreams talking about just random things. So a couple of things there. And then the other question I want to ask you before I say anything is, have you grieved the loss of him properly? And when you had the heart attack, like what was going on in your life? I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but if you just give me a bit more information there. Okay, Peter says have accident after car crash. Can this in my brain doing it so I'm dreaming? I'm just needing a bit more information what you mean there with that one. Um, Sophia says, yes, I've had those. Like it's too real, not sure if it was a dream, but like it was a revelation. Yeah, so and in dreams can also be like initiations and like where you literally go through an initiation um, of a next level of spiritual evolution of where you're at. Like, yeah, there's, and you know, if we look at every single thing that you could do in this reality, this waking reality, catch a plane, go to a holiday, do this, do that, go on a ceremony, go to watch somebody talk, like whatever. Um, you could literally do all of that in a dream state and it can be real. And again, like I said, like sometimes we're processing subconscious um, things. And you know, the other thing as well, as these years go on, the dream state is becoming more, more fluid, more real, more dimensional, um, we're accessing more. So if we look at dreams, say to 10 years ago, it wasn't so tangible is a good word than it is now. Yeah. Two, another point in it there. Okay. So is Nicole Swan still here?
Okay, so we've best friends for 32 years because that's a freaking long time. So is that what you're saying? You're best friends for 32 years? Because if that's the case, like the thing is when somebody passes over, um, it's not what we've been told. They don't turn into some amazing angel. They're not like a different, like they're like, oh, this amazing angel, like they're fine now. <laughs> They're the same person as what they were when they passed over, right? No, it's nothing about him or this situation for you, Bob. I just wanted to say that first. Um, and so the thing that keeps somebody on the earth plane, so to speak, is grief. So if they haven't grieved and if you haven't grieved, now I know it sounds silly, like the person who's actually passed over <laughs> um, hasn't grieved yet, like, but it's a thing. So... There's so much I could say about mediumship. It's a whole thing itself. So much so. Yeah. So, um, if you haven't fully grieved that, and if he hasn't fully grieved it, like there has been many mediumship sessions that I've sat with my clients where the person who's passed over comes in and they are grieving. Person in front of me physically still here is grieving and this person is bawling their eyes out just as much, the person who's passed over, especially when it's suicide. So even though they don't turn into an amazing angel and they're a whole different person over the other side, <laughs> they do have, I want to say a high level consciousness in just a sense that they see the truth now. That's sort of the only thing and that can cause a lot of grief, especially with suicide because they're like, it's like they realize like, fuck, why why um you know like why haven't i what have i done like they understand now but there's almost more grief and remorse because they can't fucking go back and change it so those two things so when you're saying he's just talking about random things so you know if you don't really know what that is um what I would be doing is you could have a conversation with him. You could book in with someone like myself. We could do a full mediumship session um, and get really clear on the pieces. But if you didn't want to do that, you can just talk to him yourself and just trust the answers that come through. Um, but my sense is there that there's a lot of grief there. Yeah, between both sides. Um, and, you know, like, like grief can be an anchor that holds souls on the earth plane, yeah, from either side, whether they haven't grieved or you haven't grieved or both, um, it can be the anchor that's keeping them here. Um, so yeah, and my sense, you know, when he came, you know, um, when he had a heart attack and he was there, um, you know, I feel like, you know, people like that on the other side, they can see and sense when that stuff is gonna happen. And, you know, I don't personally believe that he did that <laughs> in a way, you know. Um, definitely not, but I just feel like he was there for comfort or what have you. Um, so yeah, and coming into your dreams, talking about random things. So you can have a conversation with him. Um, I feel like there's other parts to it though, you know, so if you did want to book in, of course we can go into that. Um, but I just feel like there's, uh, I also feel like there's a part that he doesn't want to move on to. Yeah. Okay, so just checking, I don't know if Nicole's still here. Okay, is Sarah Jane still here and is Brenda Cullen still here? And Sally, you're still here I think, so just put that in. Is Jenna Lee still here? Gain says, sometimes when I'm trying to wake up, I hear my dad's voice talking to me. Sometimes I can't understand what is being said, but he's not in my room at the time or near me. Sometimes I can't understand what is being said. Um, is your dad still alive? Gain. So actually some family members don't understand why I chose massage therapy. There we go. <laughs> it's interesting. I was picking up the example of Korea. <laughs> it's funny, of course. <laughs> I love that. All right, just checking. I just covering these comments and just checking if people are still here. Okay. Hi, 
Hi, Tracy. Is there a reason we don't remember our dreams? Yes, sometimes we can be too stressed. Um, sometimes there's trauma surfacing in our life that we have and are trying to suppress which can you know, bring on the dreams, but at the same time, we can just be totally blocked out because we're just like, don't want to deal with any of it, can't deal with any of it, don't know how to deal with it, all of that. Um, so yeah. And then also, you know, like how have we been sleeping? Do we sleep deeply? Do we not? Are we in a lot of stress in our current life? Are we, you know, like, yeah, a lot of factors there. You can also ask to remember your dreams before you sleep. Um, and start saying even just in an affirmation sense during your day, like, I remember my dreams, I remember my dreams, I remember my dreams. Um, so yeah, and that can start to come back, but sometimes and usually it is because we're suppressing a lot of, um, stuff there. Yeah. Um, Gain says, yes, he's alive. Okay. So you hearing stuff and dad's there, but he's not there, but he's still alive and you're dreaming about your home stuff. So you know how I said like can be the structure of your life, etc. Um, the career, it's very masculine, very father orientated energies, if you may. So I'd be looking at what traumas are there between inner child and father, yeah? And how that's still influencing your life, which would be, you know, why that's coming through, if that makes sense. Okay, Jenna, so you say, I always seem to dream of people. It's like they are them, but someone else at the same time, if that makes sense. I've always wondered the meaning of this. Okay, I always seem to dream of people. It's like they are them, but someone else at the same time. So it's them, but it's not them. Yeah, they're very common dreams as well. Um, so, so it's them, but it's not them. Um, lots of different scenarios of this and I'm sort of picking up the same thing around we're processing traumas so is it friends family do you know them do you not know them like I would look at like it's them so in your waking life it's that person but it's not them so number one I'd be looking at what's the current state of the relationship you have with that person in physical life that it's them in the dream, but then it's not them, <laughs> would be looking at when it's not them, is the perception of them in the dream and what's happening in that scenario, um, you know, like, is it like playing out and you're like, it's them, but it's not them. Like, I, you know, like the relationship that you have with them currently is like, what then is the scenario playing out in the dream? with them, not them, um, because that's giving you insight to what's actually happening in the current life, um, if that makes sense. And sometimes we have like everything that happens just makes no logical sense. And that can be something processing on a deep, um, like a deep subconscious level. And then I just got as well, like can for you personally, but also obviously in every scenario, but I feel like this is something to do with past life stuff that you're processing with this person about whatever scenario it is. This is the sense I'm getting for you with that. So Sarah says, I had a dream I was outdoors at some type of human gathering where many different activities were taking place. An elder woman was doing some type of healing, energy clearing work on my body as I lay on the earth. So you know how I was just sharing before around like we can also be going through initiations, um, healing processes. Um, and, and it's interesting, right? So. On another level, if somebody in their physical day to day in our waking life, that's what we're calling it, if someone is just totally mainstream, sort of is a spiritual closet person, hides this stuff to everyone they know, but they secretly book psychic readings or they secretly do this stuff, or they don't really talk about it to their normal people, like their everyday people, because they just know that that'd be thought of as weird or out of the pack, right? I'm not saying this is you, Sarah, but just as an example, right? That's I want to say why those sorts of people would have more nightmares or freak out dreams or just weird dreams like because they're also a spiritual closet person and it's not like good bad right or wrong it's just you know the different levels of consciousness and where each person is at right there's like seven or eight billion people there's eight billion different scenarios here okay more <laughs> probably complex times a hundred <laughs> um so when you know we're actually 
you know, we sort of do this work maybe publicly or not publicly or pretty open about it. We don't care what people think about it. Like, I feel like we tend to have more clear dreams and it's not that either. I think, you know, if we're doing personal development work, we've got that intuition. We understand our intuition because we've been practicing it in our waking life and we do it. So we have more consciousness. So we're able to interpret our dreams more, right? It's basic science, I would call that, but it's not science, but you know what I mean? <laughs> um, basic one, two, three steps in a way. Anyway, the point is, so Sarah, when you tell me, um, I was at a gathering, um, an elder woman was doing some time at healing energy, clearing work on me as I, you know, lay on the earth. I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> we have like initiations, um, you know, we go through clearings, processes and stuff in our dream state. Like that stuff is so real. Yeah. And just like you would go to like, you know, an event with me doing a ceremony or something like we can do that in the dream state, like a hundred percent. Yeah. You say, I vaguely remember she used energetic weapons like saws and things I felt pressure and pain. Like she was trying to remove something from me in a few parts of my body. Yeah, see, this stuff happens. After this, she was working with her hands all over my belly button and solar plexus area, and she was having lots of trouble. So she called out another woman in the space next to hers to help her. It seemed very urgent. The other lady said she can't help. I looked down at my stomach, and there was a swirling open black hole. And then my dog started barking loudly out of the dream, and I woke up out of the dream immediately. When I got up of bed, I had pain in my stomach, but only for a few seconds. Okay, how long ago was this, Sarah? And also, like, how did you feel days after it, weeks after it? Um, and then also, what was sort of going on in your life? Like, do you feel like there was any sort of negativity around you or issues or family stuff or anything, you know, to sort of, you know, leading up to this dream? Okay, Sally. Just saw your comment there. Yeah, okay. Dreaming about a past lover that had passed away nine years ago from a car accident. I have two kids to him. Lost him. Okay, so past lover, passed away nine years. Two kids to him. I lost him when my daughter was six months old and I was three months pregnant with my other daughter. Fuck, that would have been hard. Probably still hard today, but that's huge. My dream was that he was very much alive. He came back and he's not dead. Like it was a lie. So life like and freaky that I can't get out of my head. How long ago did you have this dream, Sally? Um, and regardless, like the sense for you, um, I personally, okay, without knowing any of your situation, I personally would imagine that having a six month old baby and being three months pregnant, you had no time to grieve properly. Mm -hmm. Um, when you have a dream that he was very much alive and came back, oh yeah, it was about a month ago. Yeah, that you had this dream. So when you had that dream, okay, what I feel is happening here is that it's time to deal with the grief and the trauma of it all. Because in my, just imagining here, but with a six month old baby and a three month old in your belly, three months pregnant, <laughs> yeah, 12 week old if you're me. Um, I don't know what you'd say, you understand. You're 12 weeks pregnant, right? Like you had no time to grieve properly. Like sure you would have grieved, but not properly. <laughs> you just had to hold it together. This is the holding together one. And nine years ago, yeah, is when he passed away from the accident. So again, lots of shock there, not expected, etc. So nine years ago, nine to 10 years is a cyclic breaker. Yeah, it's a make or break situation. It's a cyclic break between nine and 11 years um, is like a big, portal of like we're gonna deal with what happened 10 years ago if you didn't deal with it properly um it didn't deal with it properly like you had to do what you had to do it's like what i was talking about before right um so i would be definitely looking at getting support like with myself 
or someone you trust that can hold the level of grief that is sitting in there because the reason that you dreamt that he was so alive okay is because energetically he is meaning you haven't let go of him you haven't you haven't grieved like the grief is what keeps something alive we can't let go of a lover or any situation if we haven't grieved to the depth of it the grief is sitting there deep down underneath um not sure how you've been feeling but if you've been feeling like extremely tired exhausted lately like that's like you're just going whoa i can't hold this down anymore and it's really starting to surface um so I would be booking in with someone like myself, or like I said, someone you trust, but they must be able to hold that level of grief to let that come out. Um, that's why you dreamt that he was alive, because basically he is with the level of grief that you haven't tapped into. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Jenna says, exes, friends, all people I know. Yeah, okay, yeah, so Jenna says, makes sense. It's people who aren't in my life anymore. Makes sense, yeah, so you're processing the shit. <laughs> wow, no, maybe it's not all shit, but you get it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so Sarah said, two weeks ago you had that dream. That's so awesome. <laughs> I, I just find it's like awesome in the sense of like what she was doing. So, and it's interesting when I was just talking to Sally, um, in tears now, yeah, you're so right, Hannah, in tears. It does blend in with the other things you've said too. Yeah, yeah, so ugh, it's just time to deal with it. Um, like, of course, you would have dealt with it, but only to the capacity that you had to still be functioning human. <laughs> Probably still today, obviously, but, you know, like when they're that young. And, pff, yeah, huge. Yeah, so much there. Um, and so, yeah, um, Sarah, when I was just talking to Sally about the grief stuff, you actually popped into my mind. And that's the reason why I asked you, like, because the other lady in the dream, so talking about Sarah now and your womb and your stomach, and there was a big swirling open black hole and she couldn't get it out. And then the dog started barking loudly. So grief for you, Sarah, um, complete betrayal by my whole extended family. Okay. And that's why I asked you, is it generational family stuff? Because sacral chakra, stomach, all generational stuff, plain and simple, right? Betray the big, what was it? Um, it was a big swirling open black hole. That's abandonment. Yeah. So again, in trust intuition, we learn the different understandings of what symbolism, language, etc., comes through with different traumas and then how we actually heal those sp specific traumas because they're all very different in, how and what they need like for sure whether it's sticky wet open black swirling hole you know like they there's so many different aspects of symbology that is so important um so okay so it was two weeks ago and so the reason i thought of you when i was talking to sally is because it's the grief especially especially not only is it generational and family stuff connected to our stomach i.e sacral chakra which is where our sacral stomach is um the big black swirling hole is like the hole of grief you just said betrayal it's a big hole it's like a uh, stab in the guts feeling right like big hole out oh my god how did this happen why did they do that blah 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 right so um it's very urgent so meaning, Sarah, you can't put this off anymore. Dealing with the level of grief. Okay, when we talk about a big black holes, grief, yeah, big, deep, you know, thing. And so, you know, it's just like all your guides and, you know, it's healers and, and, and you subconsciously have gone there for this healing too. And when they're saying, we can't help you, that means because it's you that has to do it. So, and this is the thing where like sometimes we get a distance healing or we see an energy healer and they clear a big chunk off us. Then it gets to a level and a point where nobody can help you because it's up to you to face. You don't have to face it alone, but you're the one that has to do the work. And that's why in the dream they said they can't help you. And I really want to point that out so that you know that this can be healed but no one else can do this for you. People can guide you and hold you in this space. Um, again, this is the work that I do with my clients, but you're the one that actually has to drop into the grief, betrayal, feelings, bleh, feel it all. Bleh, not nice feelings, that's why we don't deal with that. <laughs> the fuck am I supposed to go over there with that? That was just too painful, man. Does that make sense? Um, okay, just wanna double check that Brenda's not here.
Okay. Okay, Brenda's here. Awesome, I'll speak to your comments. So Sarah says, Mum who is no longer who no longer speaks to me was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. Whole extended family told by my parents not to tell me or they would hate them forever. Oh my god. Wow. How are you feeling about that? <laughs> grief. Sorry, I meant to say because grief is stored in our large intestine. I know it's technically up a little bit in the solar plexus area, technically, because the large intestine's up here, you know, around there. Um, but the sacral chakra is where grief is. And, you know, and that's why the big black swirling hole is that level of grief is like limitless. It's what it feels like and will feel like that when you're traveling that. That's what I'd be working with um, is the grief. Um, and interesting, so the inoperable, inoperable brain tumor is very like much about control, um, being up in our head, not feeling. So maybe your mom, I'm not sure, maybe is very disconnected from feelings. Usually that generation kind of is because it's just generational taught stuff. Um, yeah, that's huge. That's really, really huge. And it's like, this needs to be dealt with now. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of work. I'd definitely be getting support, both Sally and Sarah there. Um, that's huge. So, my 21-day shifter program is there. Um, closes tomorrow night. Um, that's, yeah, that's the 21 days where we go deep working and you know in my programs in my containers that i work with my clients like it's it's all 24 hour seven day a week well not seven days um i have thursdays and sundays off but i'm in there presently every other day um on telegram voice message text message like any time of day or night of course i only check them when i'm not sleeping of course <laughs> but you can message me whatever's going up right on my containers, they're very intuitive. If you work better, and if I'm needing like video call, which we shift so much, like distance healing stuff, um, you know, we really clear out so much energetically. And like, you know, if you guys have felt my power, my energy, my healing support just on a live stream, getting on a one-on-one -on -one video call with me, next level. Um, same with the sitting method that we do in trust intuition as well. It's just like, let's drain this. Let's, let's get this out. Like now, <laughs> no more putting this off. Now we face this, right? Um, no, oh, destiny, absolutely life-changing working with Hannah one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the one. Um, it, you know, and so on my healing containers on any of the programs that you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, like if, if I feel that you need a video call or a phone call rather than just the text message and voice message, like I'm like, can you book this? Let's do this now. Um, because, you know, and that's in, in the program, of course, because I work intuitively. I'm not like, oh, well, it says that you didn't get this in the package. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm an intuitive healer. If something is required, that's what we work with. Why? Because it comes through intuitively. We don't mess with that, <laughs> right? So, so my 21 day shifter program is 21 days voice message, text message. Um, but like I said, if we need the video call to shift that more, oh, that's what we do. Yeah. So that's closing tomorrow night. Um, it's about 24 hours. It's a little bit longer than 24 hours, but, um, yeah, it's a 21 day shifter program, three weeks, in that can shift so much yeah um okay so brenda i just wanted to speak to this one as well you had put one in here okay so brenda said nightmare last night that three huge hangar planes flew very low just above the main street buildings of my town of my town at first we were all in awe of the huge planes but it turned chaotic quickly with authority figures all wanting our kids <sighs> that's huge so it was horrifying and the whole town was in capture with our kids captive in other buildings. Whew. Um, slightly, don't want to scare you, but slightly feels like a little bit of a infiltration dream. I would also ask, what have you been watching lately? Um, and then also like on social media or, you know, if you've been watching world stuff or you've been watching shows that have been sort of world stuff, that sort of a vibe. If not, um, do you have kids and I, you know, like, is there something going on that you are, have been afraid 
that they would be taken away from you in some way, shape or form for whatever reason, um, that you haven't actually dealt with that feeling, that fear, that situation in your life is what I would be looking at there. Um, yeah. Because planes are also, you know, like it's out of my reach. It's overhead. I can't, you know, it's almost like what is that that you're just not, like you just don't know what to do with in a way, you know? I'd be looking at that too. All right. Sally says, yes, I definitely need to deal with it now. I know I've left it so long. I swept it on the carpet the whole time and thought I was okay. And do you know what, Sally? Like I said, like, this is a thing that I get so pissed off. People are like, you haven't dealt with it. You haven't done it. something wrong with you. Like, oh my God, you've just been ignoring it. Like, fuck. I just like, stuck that person. <laughs> because like, hello, let's have a look at reality. Like, you've been a single mom with two kids. I mean, maybe you've got a new partner. But do you know what I mean? I'm like, you've been pissy. <laughs> You know, oh, and oh, you've got five kids. Sorry. I'm um, like, hello. <laughs> so, and I guess I'm sharing this because I don't want you to also put on top of that, like, I feel bad. I didn't deal with this. Like, you're a bad person. I swept it under the carpet the whole time. I thought I was okay. I'm like, you were okay. Fucking earth, you were okay. These timeline points is when it just is like, it's just a time, oh, it's a time thing where it just needs to be dealt with now. Like, and I wanna say that people that suppress that when it's surfacing is when they start to get ill as they get older. Yeah, so, you know, like, you know, people when they're, I don't know, 70, 80, 90, and then they have all these tumors and stuff. That's because at these timeline points, they miss the opportunity to deal with it. And so it's it got harder and harder and hit physical. Does that make sense? So it's just that it's just time to deal with it now. So you've got five kids, like fuck man, you know what I mean? So it's just, now's the time. Yeah, 100%. Um, okay, awesome. What, what would you say the difference between an infiltration and a dream or are they one and the same? Yeah, so I'm not sure when you joined Sarah, but I really explained that probably in the first 15 to 20 minutes. So I would definitely go back and watch that for sure. No guilt solutions. Um, Karen, what do you mean? Like no guilt solutions for dealing with what's coming up now that you suppress and push under the carpet? Does that is that what you mean? What is the no guilt way of dealing with it? <laughs> because if that's what you mean, ultimately, like we're gonna feel guilt. So we feel guilt and we do it anyway. Yeah, ultimately, yeah. Like it's like feel the fear and do it anyway. It's like feel the guilt and do it anyway. It's not like you're gonna push that guilt away as well. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's what you meant, but yeah. All right, so 21 day shift program closing in about 24 hours. Link is in the title of this live stream. I'll pop it in the comments as well. If you've got questions about it, send me a message. Um, yeah, so not beating yourself up since. Yeah, so it's like feel the guilt and do it anyway. And and it's like, well, Hannah said, this is just part of reality. And I think the whole beating self up is kind of like, you know, it's like we just feel bad. And, and ultimately, when we look around, right, when you're in those moments, it's like, hello, reality check um in those moments you like beating self up it's kind of like it's like to stop the beating self up it's like you know what sally's example for example right i've been a single mom i don't know if you're single sorry you know but especially in those moments when you had those two children like one in your belly and a six month old you were single you just lost a partner and you've had five kids like hang on say i've had five kids don't be taking out all my time. I don't need to beat myself up about it. It's just time. It's coming up now because it's time to deal with this. Right? Yeah, we just walk through it. But we also do a reality check of why we didn't deal with it. Because we've been trying to freaking cope and survive and do it on our own, let alone heal from that as well. Come on. 
yeah? So just sort of giving them reality check can be a lot more like, you know, understanding of yourself, if you may, yeah? All right, so I'm just popping in the 21 day shifter program. So there's about 24 hours left um, for that. And it's in the title of my live stream. You can find it on my page. It's time to take care of you. Exactly, Sophia. It's just time. It's just time. So send me a message if you've got questions about it. And I shall see you guys real soon. Bye.